Okay, okay, so the the task is you've written something and it's good. But the thing is having an idea and writing it isn't executing an idea to completion. And it takes a lot of work to execute an idea to completion. Ideas, little ideas are beautiful, but then you've got to work them until they become something. And the becoming of something is difficult and it's a long-term thing and it takes effort and work and honing and skill and training and all that stuff that the, the guys on a certain football show don't have. And, and as you get towards the point where you need to make the thing that you've written... Right. As you get to... You lose... You lose perspective on what's good. Yeah. Because 20 weeks ago, it was great. Yeah. But right now... 20 weeks later when you've got the pressure of a deadline and the pressure of um, your life um, coming down on your head yeah. um, you look at the same jokes and go that, that's not funny because the surprise is gone yeah. jokes work on surprises you know mm -hmm. feasible setup twist punchline yeah. and then you know where the feasible setup is because you've worked it and you know where the twist is because you've honed it and you know what the punchline is because you've reworded the syllables so that they fit in the beat and the danger once you get towards that end thing is that you go no I've, no, got, to, I've, like got, to, I've got to throw all this I've, bit it's and all this got bit to go out. because it doesn't work it's yeah. all got to go and so you start mangling yeah. the thing that you made because nothing's funny and it's like, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. It was funny 20 weeks ago. Yeah. It stays funny now, as long as no one knows the surprise, you know, and you haven't gone around town, you know, broadcasting the jokes on radio stations. So no. you're pretty right. You're pretty safe. I, I was, I'm getting to this point, and I'm getting there with the knowledge that this is happening, mm, luckily. Mm, mm, mm. And so having spent yesterday doing a bunch of boards for the last episode that I'm working on. Right. I just was still fit. And, nah, it's, it's mm. there's nothing inherently funny about this. And so no, then, this works. when a couple of people came into the studio, they said, "What are you working on?" And I told them the story. Yep. And they were both laughing at it. Yeah. And he go, "Oh yeah, maybe it does work. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it can. Maybe it will go. Oh yeah. look at that, it's got wheels. Yeah. Oh great." Um, and so you're talking about. So this is a common problem with with uh, with stand up comics. Um, because when the there's two big festivals that comics go to in Melbourne, it's a comedy festival and the Fringe Festival, mm. and you can rotate your year around these festivals and other work. Um, and so the two big writing pushes come before the festivals. And if you're not an asshole and start writing your festival show the morning of, um, and just fill it with a whole bunch of stand-up from the previous year. Mm. If you've done fresh and new and themed and good-looking, then you've done that um, as you've registered in November, December. And so then you've written all over the summer and honed, and you, 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 when you get to February, you're in um, uh, final alteration and rehearsal mode. Okay. The trouble is that's months away from when you had the ideas. The ideas come before November mm -hmm. and then they start getting jotted down in December. Then they get worked for a couple of months and then you're ready to go. So the jokes are no longer funny because yeah. you know what they are. I'm accidentally working on the same time frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started doing this stuff in September, October. Right. And right. I'm getting towards hopefully recording the voices sort of by the end of March. Beautiful. So you know. So you know, right? Exactly. So pretty I'm much at, right on. So, so I'm at the beginning of March, going, oh, hang oh. On. <laughs> this is not uncommon. No. So, there's a technique called the street, and the street is a mental construct, and in the street, which is a compartment of mind. There are several shop fronts, yeah, in the street, and um, they neatly fit into the order in which you need to make the funny happen. So on the street, 
there is a junk library, a reading library, a workshop, and a theatre. Okay, so the junk library, you can sit in there and look at objects. And the, your brain will put objects in the junk library and revise the, um, the it'll revise what's in there. Um, and it'll inspire you to do different things. The reading library is a quiet place. And um, you can just sort of sit there and chill out and be still and allow these ideas to coalesce. And in fact, um, sometimes in the reading library you can pluck your hand up and grab a book and you'll actually get a quote out of something you've read before. Um, so it's, it's actually pretty spooky the way that works. Then you've got the workshop. The workshop is very useful because in there is a mental construct of a mechanic um, who, who physically alters jokes. You know, it yeah. physicalises jokes and they have shape and form yeah. and you can grind bits off and polish bits take and, that bit and put it know, at the and end paint instead. out bits of joke you know yeah. um, you mask that off so that they don't see that yeah. um, you can alter jokes in there and then you've got the theatre and in the theatre which is extremely important you start off with 20 and you end up with 200 you've got 20 audience and these 20 audience are people that you've sat down and honestly worked through and given them um, a physical type, an appearance, a, a social history, a, um, a subculture, membership, um, um, that you, you, you go through and give them attributes of a human being that you might meet out in the real world. Yeah. And you do that at least 20 times. That's a lot of work. And it does take a little time, but they stay with you. And the more detailed you can make them, the better, because what you then do is you invite them into the theatre. I'll tell you a funny story about that. You invite them into the theatre and you parade your jokes in front of them. And they're very honest. They will laugh at funny stuff and they'll sort of, meh, at nothing. You're doing it one at a time? Like, um, are, you, are you going... Depends. I have been in the theatre and, you know, Jonas enjoyed X and Edna didn't feel too good about that. Oh, one that. audience at a time? Well, one person or one... No, 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 no. I get all, all of them in at once. And you sort of just imagine, all right, so and that guy And then I guy sort is... of sit backstage and look at them. Okay. Yeah. And I sort of... I, sort of, I look at them and go, how are they going? Yeah. Oh, the girls don't like that. Oh, the guys don't like that. Oh, they all hate that. Oh, no, they like that. They all like that. Oh, keep that. You know? Yeah. And then you take your jokes, and if they do well, you shelve them. Don't mm. touch it. Because the enemy of good is perfect. You yeah. keep on working something that's okay, you'll lock, kill it. Lock that part off. Yeah, just don't touch it anymore. It's okay. It works. Yeah. Some of the stuff doesn't work, so you take that back in the workshop, and you know where it failed, so you rearrange it, and then you bring it back to the theatre. You bring back all the stuff you've worked on that didn't work and see if it goes again. Um, beautifully, your audience forgets what they've seen. Yeah. And they either laugh or don't. Um, and when you've gone through a number of times with one joke and, and it just cannot be fixed. Yeah, five times is my limit. Perfect. And you've 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 got your. I mean, that's it's, that's my. It's yeah. an arbitrary number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's my arbitrary number. I mean, and I know people who chuck them out after two. I know people who chuck them out after one. Um, that's not clever. Anyway, I've turfed a bunch of things, but mostly for time. Well, that that's reasonable. Yeah. Especially in a. 90 second episode yeah yeah especially in animation I mean you've got to be dead on but you get to this point where you you go hang on I'm throwing out all the good stuff aren't I hmm. but you go well I can't tell that story needed to support those jokes in 90 seconds exactly. so I need to yeah you've got to be brutal you know, it's I've got ninety seconds. If you can jam a joke in, great. If you can't, well, yeah. I'm sorry, you're too fat. You've got to go. Yeah. Oh, really funny joke. Oh, I know. Goodbye. Um, 
And so... And how do you build that up to 200? Well, you get... Uh, I, the way I did it was I got them to invite two others and <laughs> I meet them in the bar of the theatre. Oh, the theatre's got to have a bar. Yeah. Because um, you've got to have a place away from the seats that you interact with them. And then I I meet these people Yeah. Um, and I get a good look at them uh, and then I've suddenly got 60. The um, That's funny because... That uh, I was saying that that's that I want to do. I want to get an audience together mm. to show them the animatics, an actual audience, not the mind audience. Mm. But one thing I was hoping that they would do is bring a friend, mm. which immediately bulks up the crowd. Well, more that people who aren't my friends looking at it. Exactly. Bring a stranger. Bring a stranger. Please bring a stranger to my. Thing I'm above. Exactly, and that's important. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, your friends will laugh at your jokes. And you, Please don't. I only laugh, it's funny. Yeah. And you can't tell them that directly. No. Um, but. Uh, so, also, I'm hoping to put it on at Supernova. I had one day, and I was prepping a show, and I took it into the theatre, and I noticed that one of the original 20 wasn't there. I mean, that's odd. One of your mind people was this gone. This is one of my mind people didn't turn up. Yeah. I'm going, you're a mind person. Yeah. Where have they gone? Has that neuron in my brain exploded? They were watching <laughs> someone else's show. <laughs> yeah, right. And so in the bar later I've gone, oh, does anyone know who Mick is? And oh, yeah, he's sick. <laughs> okay. And I just went, Okay. Yeah, 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 he'll be he'll be back. He's just not well. And then right. sure enough, a couple of days later, Mix turned up. You feeling better? Oh yeah, man, but it was pretty rough there for a while. Plomp. On with this show. And I'm going, Oh, I don't know. Do What's you have that a, about? Do you have a standard twenty now? Um wherein I'm, Mick is going to be at the next one and the next one as well. Well the first twenty are the most developed. So you've they got were them first. So you've got Mick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got Edna and, and Yeah, yeah, I've got yeah. Mick and I've got Liz and I've got Tony and I've got um, Julie. Are they based on real people? No. No? No, I sat down one um, week and just made them. Wow. And uh, I had nothing else to do. Okay. And I was uh, laid out on my back in <laughs> in a hospital. And I was just going, right. I'll try this then. And so, yeah, I made them all up. And I uh, initially thought that it would be impossible um, to remember them. Yeah. And um, they very quickly got a life of their own. Um, these mind people have changed jobs. They have gotten married. They wow. have had children. Um, their lives have taken odd and weird turns. One chick didn't turn up one time because she was at the divorce hearing. Um, she turned up next and she wasn't happy about the world. She was a bit sniffy um, and a bit cry. But, you know, she got, got over it and, and got better. But they have a life of their own because they've got so many attributes that they actually start to live in those attributes. Right. And, you know... <laughs> it's just in my there's, head. There's probably a book. Probably. There's probably a book to be to be <laughs> written. Yeah, probably. Now that you've got them. Well, they, I don't know. It's kind of spooky. They freak me out a little bit. It's like, <laughs> Annie, what do you do? Uh, do you have this life when I'm not looking at you? Yeah. You know, you well, run around my brain having you know. It sounds like the kind of thing that good writers do when they're putting characters together for a book and you're just putting them together to look at your other work yeah yeah that's uh, what it's about all right yeah. i mean you know they're not hurting anyone they're no. not hurting me no <laughs> that's important yeah. you know one one day i'll put on a show and they won't show up and i'll go into the dressing room and there'll be people in hoods and i go oh, you didn't get what you wanted did you it's, it's over, Adi. It's over. 
If you kill me, you know, you'll be gone too. You don't know that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> wow. Uh,